uh, and uh, I'd really like close uh, friend and Some crystallography can you inspire us? Today, with computational components, opportunity for your Providing a uh, opportunity. Where I'm trying to frame this facial challenges that the answers that we inspire people to. Uh, who will think about what's next. And then, and basically, which Olga just mentioned, uh, one is the integration of diverse di data sets, even more diverse, I think, uh, on, particularly on personal genomics and how they interact with the trace. And, uh, and, and how it turns epigenomics and uh, microbiomics and immunology. And the um, design of synthetic life, uh, in a very broad sense, synthetic biology, uh, bio nanotechnology, the kind of the, the technology we have is bio nanotechnology. And here, the design of uh, uh, metabolic engineering has taken a huge step forward, and we'll see some of that. And just be limited to design and uh, the kind of engineering is common, in, uh, uh, but include evolution as a component. Safety and productivity can work hand in hand. They're not necessarily an either or. And we should, uh, this community in particular, should be getting really good at, at uh, making uh, novel um, assembly of macromolecules. And we should be solving the morphology question as well. So very large uh, macromolecular design, multi nanometer to micron scale. And you'll see this in a moment. Sorry about the bad news, uh, but hopefully, uh, or some of us hope that there, that solution is in uh, uh, use of the drugs so we have toxicity and we increase efficacy. We don't waste money on uh, trial and individuals that aren't to pro aren't going to <coughs> prosper from these drugs. So the good news is that uh, <coughs> this exponential curve line here, as this drives and telecommunication circuits, also applied to DNA sequencing. And it was, in a, it was very healthy uh, for the DNA actually reading and writing. And it got even healthy. If you, if you like exponential curves, at least, it got to per year uh, to tenfold per year. And I'll give you a little most of you know what happened in 2005. We got, we completely monopolistic uh, uh, capillary electrophoresis and replaced 21 different represented by 21 different our uh, technologies And, uh, and the other, you may be seeing many of them very in some sense, the same level. And we have range from about 50,000 
and not necessarily different companies can And it costs uh, the most recent one. Some different coverage. Uh, Prices is some computational in the range of five thousand. You know here, or interpretation, but I'm uh, productive. Uh, just just out of one way that I'll. And this involves uh, some of them, uh, blood bias and so forth, either detect. Alternatively, you can make. Perfectly aligned at uh, least twenty five fold from uh, arraying two per, per, per spot down to two, depending on the. Per DNA template. See the there's one molecule twos and threes. What the way it is done is by microfabrication, microfabrication, cutting the optical tech technology to a spot which are basically positively charged on a hydrogen charged zones will attract a nearly single DNA molecule, in this case amplified, but still a single molecule. It will bind here, and once it binds, it's to completely masses, so additional molecules can't bind. And then actually fabricated and aligned so that the Camp can will take on the order of one or two pixels per. This is that technology, which is complete, similar comments made for the other ones. Uh, what's interesting about this is the this is kind of the revenge of the short reads. Uh, a kind of a war as to who could get the the longest reads. And here, in a way, uh, here's the success of the really short ones: five to ten base pair reads, but lots of and distribute in such a way that you know the distance between them, in particular the distance between the major paired ends, um, uh, which can be any distance you want. And that use of paired ends is important for getting uh, long-range continuity, uh, even though you have very short reads. You need to have long enough reads collectively to identify where it is in the, in the genome, whether it's repetitive or unique, um, and then you know the distance between them. I'll get you part of the way. Indeed, the human genome that's been completely sequenced so far, about 7% of it all sequences, and uh, this is because of the challenge of repetitive seeing haplotypes, meaning the sequence from one end of the chromosome to another, other inheritance from father's square uh, and mother circle son. Um, there it is of <coughs> one set of recon from the gametes of the father on there. Um, get continuity, uh, both spanning and also uh, showing inheritance from the father and the mother. 
uh, can be placed. So, so this kind of trio uh, information is incredible personal genomics, both uh, uh, clinically doctors, or you can do it if you don't have family resources by doing, again, these dots is a single chromosome out of um, and here we've rigged it so, so we know that the, the father and mother are homozygous for different alleles. And of this is that you can sequence multiple sites along the chromosome, 150 million base pairs. So you get this high chromosome. And you're doing basically in situ sequencing, you're discovering uh, you know, large data sets from these macromolecular. Complicated cellular structures. Purpose here. We have to generalize this in the next slide to all of the structures and multicellular uh, uh, in the previous talk. Because you think things off each other, heterogeneity, the intrinsically like this paper. Uh, molecular still provides a lot of information. We analyzed 45 morphological, 100 measures used for classifying the different structures. What we would really like to expand this on these DNA groups to the technology. Technology in the plot to DNA to RNAs and um, get us what we call in C2. One is open access uh, with the 21 allergies for things open access adapting for a variety of other things. Making Ability to both read and CCD mirror. Each of these mirrors is on. When it does do things, things such as select, synthesize, and you. Not by a DNA behavior. So I've been talking about insurance. Synthesis in the uh, around 2003. There were companies who were working. With the same kind of chemistry for making here, the, you can relate. You know, talk. in particular, this is off to uh, the system allergy challenge. Is not merely, I mean, this is big enough going from the genome to the traits, but in a way it's too big, in a way it's not big enough um, because we can fill in the intermediates. We can look at epigenomics and we can look at environmental genomes to traits is meaningless without knowing what environment your genome is in. And uh, so we can measure all of these things. And, but that, that helps us bridge the gap, but it also presents all kinds of new computations. What has to do with it, uh, data encryption, and I'll just take it on this because it's been very important for our field. We uh, ways to encrypt both the genomic data and the trait data and environmental data. And uh, it's a progress in encryption. There is some bit of progress in, uh, and uh, even in even in where you. 
school. And for cell lines, it's fairly hard to, you can encrypt the cell line number. If you have access to the cell line, you have access to the genome. Um, there's a combination of data escape and re-identification. Either one could possibly be okay, but together they're not so great. We're doing increases where people really want to do uh, as holistically as a physician with fault testing. So there's a lot of challenges here. And one uh, website that lists identification. Doesn't really need there uh, about many and uh, a fifteen year old so by doing a standard. And uh, the fact that the wife he, he found. And so there's some little significance. Is to uh, consider. These risks. And we do this by having and a thousand. But we would start for they are up to speed. We've already thought through whether. In order to get into the product. Little um, a single cohort. Many different means multiple environments. Be able to test these in it. We'll go through some of those. In the Boston part, they're doing this and have their own numbers. We have six. Uh, and there's a line. This includes a uh, Here's a uh, group uh, that may individual variation. And uh, clinical uh, to consumer or Um, now, it's been a number of genes up ago, and these uh, results. These are the subset that are. Rare for the most part. Uh, one in a. In. Significantly, significantly affect. So, this is a very important. Do our best predict. That you can very much in favor of the of human 
there's hundreds of thousands of His other father, and family, they were affected the silly and issues, including faith. They, they had hated parent. Uh, so Zygote, where you had forced jump in many, many other examples of these response interests in this time. Rarely, because they're 10%. Uh, um, the systems biology conclusions, I think, are, or predictions are quite interesting in that. Uh, out of the vast number of traits you could predict for the heterozygote, which is only one allele is affected, the most likely, uh, or the first sort of guess you might have is this going to be a weaker version of all the symptoms, uh, however many they may be and how many of their tissues, uh, of the homozygote. So that's a very sharp hypothesis and allows possibilities. So we've uh, now done 25 uh, genomes that if we put through a, a system that's intended to be a community resource, call it get evidence for genomes, environments, and traits, and evidence base. And this is uh, precip <clears throat> precipitated in part because we need to be able to hand data back to the volunteers, but also because we would get cases like this where an individual in the PG, PG, PGP number six would have uh, what looks like it might be a causative allele, a, a deleterious looking alanine to threonine at position 13 of MYL2 gene, uh, unaffected parents, and, but, and if you look in the literature, there's only one case of this uh, which is affected. It has this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now you could say, oh, well, don't worry about it. Uh, it, although this is something that causes uh, people to die during uh, exercise, including athletes, is very quite, and there are many different genes that cause this, and this is one of them. Um, but there's only one case with this particular allele. Um, but we knew that there would be, uh, the physicians involved in the Personal Genome Project knew that there would be many other uh, cases if we could ask around, and you have to know who to ask, and what phone number is to call, and so forth. And unfortunately, it's not easily available, but we did that and we asked around and you find lots of more cases, these, these dark uh, circles and squares, where people have the same DNA mutation and uh, many of them affected by uh, hyper cardiomyopathy um, at different ages of onset. At that point, we thought it was worthwhile um, uh, for uh, PGP number six to get an uh, uh, echocardiogram thickening of the, of the heart um, every two years, uh, hoping he wouldn't develop any symptoms. We need some way that each, each time we go, these scary looking alleles due to sequencing here, and we can, that's easy, we can additional sequencing, which we did uh, in a CLIA approved Lab. A, a, a false transfer of data, data from to the basis, or it could be a false negative, for, um, or it could be that, that there's a failure in the literature. A couple dozen of these where the failure in the literature is ambiguous, or, or, it's, or it says that it's a very low when um, it's doing a small population. Which can either mean the it probably doesn't mean the first, um, it can mean things like they're different environments or different populations. And this is, of course, tremendously important. If you mitigate the uh, that are already floating around, you might be able to be new drugs. It's almost 27 years. Uh, a page for the website. Uh, 
more predictive. And uh, like many American descent, he had uh, traits to less uh, system biology. They uh, acquire genetic diagnosis. The We prioritize uh, patient control or familiar of the and, and you can have be a, a low clinical symmetry. So we want to uh, have all of these through some goes through for a particular individual. Uh, error in the literature, or error in the database. Uh, the situation doesn't have to be repeated hundreds of thousands of times. And the person org is created a human is a automatic or manual curation and can propagate and be used. Uh, we we invite you to join this in this. So the environment is in the mechanisms, viruses, the allergies, and, and to some extent in our, in our immune reaction to ourselves, the autoimmunity. And, and so the combination of uh, microbiomics and immunome is very significant, um, both as a trait in itself and also as an indication of the environment. So uh, so it has been, and, and this applies to uh, to me, uh, that you skip the diagnostics and use use the humans as a as a test tube, uh, as a kind of experimental animal, and say, here, try this antibiotic, and if you're still alive, come back, and it's not working, come back. Um, another, uh, uh, sort of at the other end of the spectrum, the future would be to just take a little drop of a, of a fluid from your body. Uh, uh, a few microliters, put it into a, a, a nano device of some sort, so you're using e only a fraction of that microliter to, to tell all about your medical state. Now the problem with this is a lot of interesting cells uh, are, are rare cells. They're present in less than one cell per milliliter, so taking a microliter is, is, or even a milliliter is not going to be very good diagnostically. Now, just, just to stimulate the Institute, uh, this is a, a, a new and charge of this work. Uh, uh, yeah, it's having to do with technology and, and um, aspects of biology and engineering. And in this case, the leader of the, the micro leaders, the amount of fundamental cells. So you can do uh, this is a polity. I'm not making a mix. We don't look at the antigen of every microorganism. Uh, your inherited gene. And we, when we did this, uh, Gilton Dantas and Morton, they, we looked at multiple classes. We could find and resist at very high levels. Um, So there's sort of hypothesis. Think about both research and that's you could also look where some goes. 
past years. For HIV, you roughly the test focusing on hard cell um, from immunological, um, but uh, there's other things that you can. There are many things you can tell from the immunological tests, including auto and so forth. And what we, what we do is we we want to look at the B receptors called antibodies. And here there are um, 46 germline encoded variable regions plus 23 uh, diversity regions and six joining regions. This is, varies from human, human bodies exist and how they're recombined varies uh, not only from human inheritance, but somatically from, um, from time to time, from minute to minute uh, uh, all the time. And in addition to just combinations, these 46, 23, and 6, at the junctions themselves are new sequences that are created, terminal transferase, putting in strings of, uh, of uh, any base. It actually creates sequences that are not present in any uh, existing genome and, and it's not in any database. We're doing this in uh, collaboration with Roche, to which we're very grateful. So the way that this is to play out is this textbook people where you have uh, Of almost every, every response, not, um, trace amounts of this, and then you get exposure, you get thousand fold increase in response to that. And, and here we're doing a time period of um, and then you get days here, uh, many days later, and you get. So we've monitored some of these individuals for two years. Here represents the point of uh, vaccination. And you can get a uh, self-organizing map or any uh, your other favorite clustering, and you can get a relate of sequences that are peaking at around one day. That's their major characteristic, is they're peaking about the time of the vaccination. Um, they're presumed to be non, um, unrelated to the vaccination, to the antigen of vaccination, although some of them could be pre-existing antibodies. And then at seven days and 21 days, these are more likely to be responsive to the vaccine. And these would be lost in any kind of pre prior kind of analysis um, where we would look at, at popula bulk populations and so forth. But you can find them here. This is the dominant uh, sequence. It's a, trace, it's a trace amount of the total, but it's, it's very clear in this kind of display. And when we sequence the, the, these ones and then test them functionally uh, for their ability to bind to the, um, the antigens that were used in the vaccine, uh, an enrichment, uh, this is preliminary data not yet published, uh, but submitted. Uh, the, uh, these two uh, clusters here are highly enriched on the order of 50% or better uh, for the antigen, the flu antigen, which was the uh, immunizing. So uh, epigenomics, uh, very quickly, uh, uh, we, we just heard Establish these PGP volunteers. Here's PGP numbers you get all the major development bone neurons, hepatic an important and drug metabolism you can look not only at the <clears throat> predicted and, and, and sort of levels of RNA, levels of protein here, and, and the levels of protein activity in the case of cytochrome P450s um, that affect uh, drug uh, toxicity and efficacy by, by drug metabolism. We did this in collaboration with George Daly and Ian Wilman. Now, that bit about uh, stem cells levels of human 
cells, and these will be a little more broadly. Um, This individual hit ground is operation. Maybe you know that here we sell uh, lowering the cost. You know why it's need. Evolution is a great evolution. Heard about making genome scale processes, and uh, but before we launch into that, uh, we need to know why we would do that. And we could do genetic engineering, sort of at the plasmid level, a few genes at a time. Genome engineering is co sometimes casually referred to the same sort of one gene at a time, but just doing it a chromosome rather than a plasmid. Metabolic engineering typically involves a pathway of up to 30 uh, enzymes, usually less. But one, one of the few clearly articulated reasons for doing some genome-wide engineering is changing the genetic code, changing the translation code, which gets you three things. It gets you multivirus resistance, it gets you some safety by not having functional exchange with the environment, and it gets you new amino acids. So, uh, uh, with uh, automobiles, and trans Let's into gas station. We're all different. And everything that I'm talking about in synthetic biomedicine. Uh, airbags. Licensing, but you also need that. This is a ninety percent of the theoretic metabolic systems biology behind this. Um, it only involved twenty seven change for four genes from two uh, organisms put in, and then uh, another six plus thirteen genes were from were modified in C two. That's a here. Um, here. This is not future that requires change in performance to um, close related so biomass. Idea of making the terpene pathway or story not yet public successor if the enzyme involved involved in this alkyl fatty acids it seems like the carboxyl at the end. Carbon oxygen, which is just pure hydrocarbon. Um, there are places to this, and then there are other steps that wouldn't make any difference. That was meaningful, even though it was trace amounts. Genome level the look of genes that were particularly those genes, and then showing, putting it into a normal coli, and showing. That was necessary, and then we're producing them and making them and about the board. Um, genome and genome on SIDS. We start out and slowly moved, moved up to. Uh, we can do our perfectly well. 
as little as one based per um, per day. You stay for the ligand nucleotides. Um, of course, that involves also looking at second hand of the strand relative to ordinary. In addition to our upgrade, um, and applying uh, this to the understanding. The code. So we we made, made changes required for changing all of this particular code on the receive codons. This is the, the easiest one to change, and also one of the more useful ones to change. Um, we changed all the TAGs, every single place in the genome that it's used, um, changed it to TAA, so that now that can be freed up in the machinery that normally would be essential machinery, either a tree RNA or in this case a release factor, can be freed up, and you can. Um, uh, now you have C4 that's available. And then this is the plan that, that we've, you know, got computer aided software to design, which is designed and now synthesized. Um, all of the, uh, the oligonucleotides required to change the genetic code genome-wide to free up nine codons, not just one. And you can see that if we changed all of these, um, it would be about 2.7% of the genome because we're just changing one base pair at a time. But the piece of the, even the small piece of the DNA we're using to change the genome when synthesized on chips would cover the genome two and a half times. It basically completely tiles the genome. So you can think of this as either highly a, a changing it a bit at a time, but by doing it a bit at a time, you, you, you could have a, a, a fatal flaw in your computer-aided design, and by doing it a bit at a time and using uh, accelerated evolution, you can find all the flaws as you go, rather than building up one perfect genome that that's meets your criteria but, but would be uh, uh, non-viable. Here's an example of where we did bring in Historically, with metabolic is you get that's the key is I'm that's if I just open that, that's what it's and and what might happen standard product in addition and, and so it would slow it down. You Um, these actually uh, deep, but what we did was we did we muted um, yes, that you can include. But anything you might be And here you can see we went the whole way. And uh, uh, which is a Complexity is not just change uh, uh, information about the abundance and swap for and some of these. So it's a very interesting. Made uh, in the Bible. Uh, these are changes, so it's not totally. 
the uh, change we made in the genome will be a happy G and my people are not growing and keep a new cell cells. The test bed for out uh, morphology of genome engineering where out um, does quite well. Have, have worked. I think the combination of DNA. Most of these were some. This is one of the. With. And with uh, William Sheehan. Any uh, does of healing. Also, you can make is actually around around the terms that will um, and as you know the. the We have this really on the and here's a like this uh, I copy indeed every hour comically precise. And so this is just an example. Complicated uh, uh, scale. It was originally done with the dope. Some we may know about. Sir, um, the Of the sort of sorts of structure organism or, or even more of course, materials will now be accessible. The, the best way of making materials is it's going to be a while, I think. So, personal genomes, environments, and trauma, and uh, all these applications of synthetic biology. Period, full stop. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is another uh, um, subject of And then, how quickly you start? Uh, Any of the populating and, and so how and uh, uh we have it's perfectly new uh, So we can make a more do their 
bir zaman strains they're anti mutator strain so the production you can replication purpose so it may not matter understanding How quickly that happens. The coli system is per base pair. Almost anything that's of value to, to replication will get cleaned up. And so when we, we do our laboratory evolution experiments, which I did really show, um, but we've done them over um, hundreds of days, uh, thousands of generations. You will find, we, I think we found other mutations uh, of m many different kinds over and over again, same pathways, but different mutations, and very few hitchhikers. Very few mutations that are off target. That, that you see the same story happening again and again, and very sequence, sequenced, um, very few others. That's I don't I know every organism in every evolutionary, lab evolutionary paradigm, but uh, it, it's possible that these things are quite stable. Thanks so much. I have a question uh, engineering. And the pathogenic in a specific care. Probiotics, so it's a wonderful opportunity for people uh, that has to be reassessed. There, uh, you know, another natural population, something you've engineered. The biggest scientific challenge model. Related. Uh, it would be nice to have genome sequence. My guess would be computational challenge. Expensive. So getting 95%. The big challenge is coral. And I've laid out some large cohorts that and that's going to be statisticians, but I think do it and it's Uh, good predictions, they're a beautiful genes challenge them. 